Welcome to our discussion on fundamental data structures every programmer should know. Now data structures, what are they? Think of them as the building blocks of programming. They're a way of organizing and storing data so it can be used efficiently. They're vital for designing efficient algorithms and help manage large amounts of data seamlessly. There are different types of data structures, each with its unique qualities and uses. We can classify them into primitive and non-primitive data structures. Primitive types are the simplest forms of data like integers, characters, and booleans. Non-primitive types, on the other hand, are more complex and can be divided into linear and non-linear. Linear data structures arrange data in a sequential manner, like arrays and linked lists, while non-linear ones, like trees and graphs, do not follow a particular order. With a solid understanding of the basics, we can now delve into specific data structures. First on our list are arrays. Think of arrays as a row of lockers, each with its own unique key. They store multiple elements of the same data type and allow quick access to individual elements. We have one-dimensional arrays, which are like a single row of lockers, and multi-dimensional arrays akin to a grid or a cube of lockers. Arrays are pretty straightforward, but they do have the limitations, like a fixed size once declared. Arrays, while simple, form the building blocks for more complex data structures. See, uh, next up, we have linked lists. These are a type of data structure where each element points to the next, forming a chain. They come in three flavors, singly, doubly, and circular linked lists. Singly linked lists have pointers to the next element, doubly linked lists have pointers to both the next and previous elements, and circular linked lists loop back to the start. Basic operations include insertion, deletion, and traversal. Linked lists offer more flexibility than arrays and are crucial in many programming scenarios. Moving on to stacks and queues, let's dive into stacks first. Picture a stack of plates. You add one on top, you take one from the top. This is the essence of a stack in programming with operations known as push to add and pop to remove. And peak, that's simply checking out the top plate without removing it. Cues, on the other hand, are more like a line at the grocery store. The first one in line gets to check out first. This is what we call FIFO. First in, first out. We add to the end of the line with on cue, and when it's their turn to check out, we use DQ. Front and rear operations, as you might guess, allow us to peek at the first and last inline, respectively. Stacks and queues are essential tools in the programmer's toolkit, each with their specific uses. Now, let's explore trees and graphs. Trees are non-linear data structures with a hierarchical nature. They're composed of nodes, with the topmost node known as the root. Two notable types of trees are binary trees, where each node can have up to two children and binary search trees, which add the condition that the left child node is less than the parent and the right child is greater. Switching gears, let's delve into graph theory. In contrast to trees, graphs are a set of nodes connected by edges without any hierarchical structure. They can be classified into different types, directed, where edges have a direction, undirected, where edges don't have a direction, weighted, where edges carry a certain value or weight, and unweighted, where edges carry no weight. From social networks to route planning, trees and graphs are powerful data structures used in a variety of applications. Up next, we have hash tables and heaps. Hash tables are like supercharged arrays. They use a special function, the hashing function, to map keys to specific slots. This makes accessing data lightning fast, but sometimes two keys will map to the same slot, causing a collision. Don't worry though, there are tried and tested techniques to resolve these collisions, such as chaining and open addressing. Switching gears, let's talk about heaps. These are a type of binary tree with a special property. Each parent node is either greater than or equal to its child nodes in a max heap or less than or equal to its child nodes in a min heap. This property makes heaps ideal for sorting data and implementing priority queues. Common operations on heaps include insertion, deletion, and heapify, which ensures the heap property is maintained. Hash tables and heaps are advanced data structures offering unique benefits. Let's dive into sorting and searching algorithms. These are the bread and butter of any programmer. Sorting algorithms such as quick sort, merge sort, and heap sort are vital for organizing data. Quicksort, for instance, is a divide-and-conquer method, 
partitioning an array into two halves, then sorting them independently. Mergasort also employs a divide and conquer approach, but it divides the array into equal halves. Heapsort, on the other hand, uses a binary heap data structure to sort elements. But what about when you need to find specific data? That's where searching algorithms come in. The linear search algorithm is the simplest, scanning each element in the array until it finds a match. Binary search, however, is a more efficient approach. It works by repeatedly dividing in half the portion of the list that could contain the item until you've narrowed down the possible locations to just one. Mastering these algorithms can significantly improve your problem-solving skills in programming. Now, we'll touch on some advanced data structures. As we venture deeper into the world of programming, we encounter more complex data structures like tries, suffix trees, and B trees. These aren't just fancy terms to impress your friends, but they are powerful tools that can revolutionize the way we handle and process data. Starting with tries, these are search trees used for quick retrieval of words in a dictionary. They offer a unique way of storing and searching, making operations faster and more efficient. Next up, we have suffix trees, a compressed tree containing all the suffixes of a given text. They are used in various applications such as pattern matching and bioinformatics. Lastly, let's talk about B trees. These self-balancing search trees maintain sorted data and allow for efficient insertion, deletion, and search operations. They are widely used in databases and file systems. While complex, these advanced data structures can be incredibly powerful in the right situations. As we wrap up our discussion, let's remind ourselves of the importance of data structures. From basic arrays and linked lists to more complex trees and graphs, each has its unique strengths and applications. We've seen how hash tables and heaps can optimize our tasks and how advanced structures like B trees can elevate our code. Let's not forget the crucial role of sorting and searching algorithms. Remember the right data structure can make all the difference in your programming journey. Until next time, keep coding.